ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. For one, Andre. You're not good at this. Get out. Let me tell you a personal story about Vince McMahon. You just made the list. Oh, my God. Yeah. Sorry. No speak English. Dummy. Yeah. Goodbye and good night. All two. It's still real to me, damn it! <laughs> Gummy, yeah. This is the worst town I've ever been in. Hold three. The Moss covers. Three handle. Family Grenunzo. Mamma mia! And now. Unchained.media presents the B. Plus Podcast! With your host, Greg Unchained. It's me, Austin! It was me all along, Austin! Number four, Armbar! I will never retire! I still got 200 more! I got 200 more holes to lift! All right, ladies, gents, and non-binary friends, welcome to the B-Plus Podcast. I'm your host, Greg Unchained. Today is Monday. You know what that means. It's time for the Impact Zone. Joining me, as he has recently for these podcasts, Mr. Mysterious. How are you, brother? I am fantastic. It's been a really great week for Impact Wrestling. It has been. It has been. It's been a busy week for you too, right? You had like an engagement party and shit. I am in a bit of a blur right now. So if anyone's <laughs> wondering if I'm a, sound a bit tired, but <laughs> yeah, get that out of the way, right? We'll let people know you've had a weekend. Uh, we're doing this. We're recording this Sunday afternoon. You might be feeling a little seedy. There was some wrestling. There was some parties. There was some leftover party parties. So, you know, just we've got to put that on front street so people are aware. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, we'll say, like, what, Mysterious has just lost his edge this, this week, <laughs> but yeah. No, no, you're just probably hungover. It's fine. So let's let's get into Impact, though. Um, you hear something I haven't said in a while. Wow, Impact was good this week. <laughs> and I just want to – we mentioned this earlier, how Greg th- said three weeks from now, uh, I'd have changed my tune about Impact Wrestling and say, like, I'll be in the same mindset as him, but – it looks like we've really progressed into something here now. Like, impact has been good. Give it a month. <laughs> give, we're we're going to keep delaying it. We'll see how we go. Give it, an, give it another month. Uh, somehow, I don't know, Killer Cross will get signed or something, and Johnny Impact will go back to exactly where he was, and Brian Cage will look like a numpty again. I don't know how, but give him a month, man. It's it's Impact. They're really, really good at going off the rails. <laughs> that they are, that they are. Yeah, but let's. Uh, I almost, I almost went into spoiler territory there. Ooh, let's run through the show uh, bit by bit. Mm-hmm. Um, and because I'm feeling positive, I want to shout out something that I haven't shouted out with you here before. Sure. The recaps at the top of the show. Yes, I love that they do a recap at the top of the show. They do. Um, if nothing else, like even with the weeks past, how impacts have been too, um, has, has been a bit more divisive. I will say, like they can really create a good hype package to make it seem like it was all part of the plan yeah well i mean maybe it was all part of the plan who knows <laughs> who knows who but knows? uh let's let's but then we get it so yeah the, the hype packages i like those i like that we get a you know the whole previously on because this is a serialized tv show that's what uh, mm-hmm. wwe fails to realize that their wrestling show isn't a sports show mm-hmm. it is a serialized drama and yep. you should have a previously on you really should yeah, they used to. Well, we had like the raw rebounds and stuff, like in early years, but they've kind of since stopped that. But yeah, and like obviously the stories as well. Like they need to understand that they can't just renege on whatever they've developed in the previous weeks. So we'll see how we go. Yeah, I mean WWE do the weird like they they constantly talk about oh this and this, and they show all the replays and stuff, and they have a three hour show. And, you know, a third of it almost is replays of what happened earlier tonight and replays of, of what happened last week. And you can probably do away with that and just put a previously on at the top of the show and then make your show two hours and trust that people are watching, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I feel like that's a better 
way to go about it. But hey, who am I? I'm just a Mark with a microphone. Let's get into the actual show. Mm -hmm. Rich Swan, Willie Mack, and Tommy Dreamer, a really random trio. Absolutely. uh, Teaming up to take on OVE. Uh, What did you think of this match? I thought it was really fun. Now, like we had the match last week with Tommy Dreamer and Willie Mack, and those two together wasn't the best showing, I will say, but I think they really found a nice little uh, chemistry between all three, like when you add Rich Swan into the mix, because it was really Rich Swan and Willie Mack kind of egging Dreamer on to do as many weird stunts as he possibly can, given his limited moveset. Yeah. I think that uh, Tommy Dreamer is someone that I've shit on a bit lately. Mm. And uh, uh, this was actually the best Tommy Dreamer match I've seen in a long time. Yeah. Like I, I mentioned last week how he's a good supporting wrestler. Like when when yes. he's in charge of the match, it's not really that strong. But when he's like can lean into more comedic side or when he can lean more on the extreme side with his um, House, of, House of Hulk hardcore background, ugh, sorry, House of Hardcore background, then he can really pull off something. But this was yeah. a really good opener. I, I thought they used him really well in this match. He was there for the comedy spots. He was there for the gross out bit when fucking oh, re- Sammy I, spat I, on I rep- his face and he licked that. it. Thank you for reminding me. Oh, oh I actually gagged. Yeah. I actually gagged while watching it. Um, uh. I'm, I'm almost gagging thinking about it. <laughs> Um, but, uh, yeah, he was there for those bits and, uh, and he took the pin, which is where he needs to be. He needs to be that guy. Yes. You didn't want Willie Mack or Rich Swan taking the pin. So no. it was really good. He, they used him perfectly here. And I've said it a couple of times now. I really, really love Jake Christ. Yeah. He had a really good showing here. I, I think he was the workhorse of OVE throughout this whole match. Yeah, it's it's just the the little mannerisms too. Mm-hmm. Not even just the the like all out work. Like when you look at like what he's doing in the in terms of you know the bumps and all that stuff, mm-hmm. but, but just the little mannerisms in how he captures that mini draw character. Mm-hmm. I I love it so much. Like I think long after Sammy Callahan's gone, he can be that kid that idolized Sammy Callahan and still does the shtick. Like I think it'd be amazing. You know, I, I think it's a really good gimmick for him. Yeah, yeah, uh, but yeah. So ultimately. Uh, OVE do pick up the win uh, with when Callahan hits the pile driver, gets the pin on Dreamer. That's the old boring go, ball. Yeah, yeah. And then we go backstage and we see Cage asking Johnny Impact, who still has the neck brace on, <laughs> if he's ready for tonight. And we find out that the world title match is going ahead and it's going ahead tonight. This surprised me. This surprised Like, they even said before that that he was medically cleared and yet he's still wearing the neck brace. I was like, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, you can be medically cleared, but then still be safe up until the point. I don't know. Like, it, it doesn't not make sense. No, it was just a little bit of a scratch, scratch my head situation there. But yeah, that that was one of the things building up to later on in the night. Uh, and then we get another promo, and it's one of my favorite promos, The Rascals. Um, the, the last week's one I didn't think was great, but this week's was fantastic. So The Rascals sitting around, uh, the implication is they're mm. sitting around getting high. Yes. I like that uh, Moose Moose shows up um, because they're talking about the reason they lost was because they didn't wear the masks. And Moose is like, I like the mask idea. And they're like, Moose likes the mask idea. Wait, why is Moose here? (laughs) And they're they're all high. And uh, Moose is like joking with them. And uh, remember when we picked on that guy with the pink jacket? Uh, uh, That was him. Yeah. And so he beats the shit out of them. (laughs) And it was really fun. Moose really added a better dynamic for this. I actually laughed at this compared to the other ones they've done. (laughs) Yeah, well, I've laughed at a couple of them, but last week's wasn't great. Uh, this one, and it seemed random, and I was like, it has to set up something with Moose or else it's pointless. And it did. It set up something with Moose, and it was the best I've seen Moose be in a long time. It was the best I've seen the Rascals be, and I really, really enjoyed it. Obviously, it's going to lead to some kind of squash match where Moose destroys them, mm-hmm. uh, which is n- not great, but... Story progression. Uh, yeah, but yeah, well, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they'll actually get the upper hand and he'll have to find a partner because he's kind of he's kind of in nowhere land story wise right now. That's true. Like maybe he and Cross could be a tag team later on down the line since we've had that for the past few weeks. But I don't know. Yeah, well, I don't know. I don't think so. No, no, <laughs> I think no. he'd have to go somewhere else. But yeah, uh, then we get Glenn Gilberti versus Kikutaro. Um, because reasons, I guess Glenn Gilberti has a match coming up against Scarlet Bordeaux, so they need to remind us that he can actually, you know, wrestle. Yeah. And so he comes out, he has a match with Kikataro and he wins. Yeah. Like Kikataro goes for the moonsault and Gilberti just hits him with a stunner. He was 
looking for a clown and out comes Kikitaro. Um, I found it weird. Like he went on to commentary he actually asked him, isn't this guy the current new Japan champion or something or other? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think, I think it's a carryover from a podcast. He does like he's on, I think he's on Conan's podcast mm-hmm. and he plays this character that's like a exaggeration of him in real life. And he plays this character that's a misogynist Mm -hmm. and, uh, and is uh, just clueless when it comes to the current state of wrestling and wishes things were still, you know, 1999 WCW, which why you would want that. I guess it's because he was on TV then. I (laughs) I don't know, Uh, but that's, it's kind of, it's a shtick that he does on the podcast and he's carried it over to the show. I guess it's very, very niche, very niche. Just like as is disco and his whole gimmick. (laughs) Yeah, like four people got it, yeah. you know, <laughs> of the of the 2,000 people watching Impact, which it's a terrible, um, but yeah, of the 2,000 people, I guess four out of 2,000 is not a bad ratio. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, then we see Tyre pacing backstage and Rolando Menendez rears reporter. his head. <laughs> investigative reporter, right. And I found it so weird, like how he just, um, he said like, oh, you have to be worrying about your match with um, your potential number one contender, whether it be Tessa Blanchard or Jordan Grace. And she's saying like, no, you idiot. I'm look- I'm worried about my husband. Like, what are you on? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So she's worried about the main event. She's not worried about her number one contendership situation, which realistically she should probably be worried about both. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but it was but, just uh, it's just the the goal of um the reporter just like oh you have to be worried about this yeah yeah don't don't tell her how to feel man uh, she can feel what she wants to feel and uh, then we get the Marie match between Reno Scum and KM and Fala Bar uh, they brawl outside the ring before the match starts which I felt like that could have gone a little longer but yeah, yeah uh, it is what it is. And then they uh, KM and Fala Bar pick up the win again. Fala has hurt his knee. It looks like mm-hmm. I, I got to question this booking though. Like mm-hmm. why why bring back Reno Scum just to have them lose their first two matches both mm-hmm. to a team who at various points in the past have been played off as a joke. I don't know whether they have anything else going for them. Like uh, Reno Scum, I mean, whether it's going to keep they're going to try and get their win back and prove that they aren't a joke and then they can really go at the tag team division. But uh, maybe with the, the whole storyline with Falabar with his knee, maybe they can go more towards that angle. But yeah, it's, it's really, it's they'll attack and try to get their win back. Yeah. Like the whole, the whole getting your win back works for a baby face team, yeah. <laughs> but for a heel team, not for a heel team. Yeah. It's, it's just weird booking. I'm just not, not too sure on it. Like either they're been brought back as a jobber team and they were overhyped or they're doing a story backwards. Yeah. This was one of the lower points I felt for impact, like despite being a strong show. Yeah. Yeah. This was probably the low point for me as well. Uh, then Conan wants an answer from the Lucha brothers. They throw up the Sarah Miedo in his face and he's like, you're going to pay for that. You'll pay for that. And I'm just like, why are you, you lot so weak skinned? Like, yeah. <laughs> he's literally just just doing a a, a symbol mm-hmm. in your face. It seems like is a that com- really something that warrants revenge? Seemed like a complete one eighty from like him telling LAX to calm down, and like the moment they do the exact same thing <laughs> to him, this is like, oh, it's on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can do it to them, and they have to control themselves. But me, <laughs> not me. I'm Conan. I'm the K Dog. It's uh odd <laughs> from, a char- from a character perspective i'm just like okay we're a bit all over the place but you know it's fun lax are chilling conan comes in and he's like oh it's on go get the armaments get the tables get the barbed wire whatever it's on we're doing it we're gonna and they're like we've got the match and he's like no but i'm i'm, I'm gonna go get that now he says that a lot i'm gonna go take yeah. care of that right now um and, and then, then <laughs> the bit that popped me though is as they leave the clubhouse they're actually like scarecrows <laughs> <laughs> I merely yes. thought of you when I heard that. <laughs> I love it. I love it so much. The Scarecrows thing pops me every time. I almost want LAX to rename themselves the Scarecrows. <laughs> Promotional consideration paid for by the following. Hey guys, just a reminder, if you want to hear all of these wonderful B Plus podcast episodes completely ad-free, make sure you head over to Patreon or 
Podbean, where we are the featured podcast this week. You can subscribe for as little as a dollar a month, up to $10 a month, where anything you want to help us with, it really helps out. It's going to help us grow the site. It's going to help us redesign some things. And everything that we get through this and through the advertising as well is all going straight back into the podcast so that we can get Aussie Graps out there for the rest of the world to hear about, for the rest of the world to see, so we can grow this mission of watch global, support local, and build indie wrestling. So if you want to be a part of that and get some really cool rewards like call-in shows, bonus episodes, ad-free like I mentioned, then head over to patreon.com slash the B plus and subscribe today. Hey everyone, just want to take a second to tell you about one of our new sponsors, Outbreak Nutrition. Outbreak Nutrition are creating supplements for survival, sharper minds, quicker reflexes, all the energy you need to take your performance to the next level, whether that, that be on the field, in the gym, on the gaming field. That's right, they have specifically designed gaming supplements as well to help you focus on those late night sessions. They even sell coffee, you guys, at Outbreak Nutrition. You can get coffee pods, you can get coffee beans, you can get supplements for the bedroom as well if you want to enhance your performance there. These are performance enhancing supplements for every aspect of your life, specifically designed by gamers for gamers to stay fit and healthy in the gym, to stay sharp and focused on the game, and to dominate in all areas of life. So check out OutbreakNutrition.com, and for being a listener of our podcast, they will give you 10% off your order when you enter the code B+. That is B-P-L-U-S at checkout. So make sure if you want to stay on top of your game, if you want to take your performance to the next level, OutbreakNutrition.com, enter the code B+, at checkout. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited for this match. I think that, uh, you know, we know how good, uh, both of the Lucha brothers can do in hardcore stuff. Like if you watch Lucha Underground, mm-hmm. uh, of course, and even Pentagon and Sammy Callahan had a really good hardcore feud last year in Impact. So we, we know how, how good they can do. We know how well LAX do in that environment as well. So I think this is going to be a really good four fourth match, really good match between these guys either way. Well, it's added an extra element to it because we thought that it would just kind of go around in circles a little bit more. But no, like it's a weird turn for Conan, but at the very least, it's helped develop the story more. Yeah, and it's actual progression. <laughs> Something has changed. Something has changed that makes the next chapter more compelling, right? What a shock. It's it's basic stuff, and it's about time that it was happening. Uh, I I guess like you can go, you can pull out the it's long term storytelling, and I'm like, yeah, okay, but you still want each chapter, which is each week, mm-hmm. to be interesting in moving it forward. And uh, it hasn't been that way, but it, it's it, it's moving now. It's moving. We're we're moving again. We'll see when we hit the brakes, but at the moment we're moving. Uh, we get Jordan Grace versus Tessa Blanchard. And shock of the night, very happy shock. Jordan Grace wins clean. Absolutely. We thought that this would be Tessa defeating the undefeated Jordan. And like, we were thinking, well, what will Jordan have to do after this? Like, will she just leave just to go somewhere else? But no, she's now the new number one contender for the knockouts title. Yeah. Yeah, it's. Uh, I, I wasn't expecting it. I thought, yeah, I thought we'd, we'd get more circle running with Tessa Blanchard now. Like, I'm really happy with this because now Tessa Blanchard has some growing to do before she can come back for the title mm-hmm. because it, was, it wasn't it was shenanigans. Like, she did lose the title to shenanigans. Yeah. She lost the rematch to shenanigans. She deserved a rematch, but she can't say she deserves a rematch anymore. No. She's going to have to come back and, and conquer Jordan Grace first mm-hmm. uh, after Jordan Grace wins or loses. Uh, presumably, we want Jordan Grace to win yes. because, uh, you know, although given the uh, events of the main event... I'm not opposed to Taya as champion anymore. Mm-hmm. So let's uh, see where it goes. But Tessa Blanchard, I guess, starts throwing shit around, pushing refs over, goes on a rampage, and uh, Gail Kim comes out to attack her. The Hall of Famer Gail Kim has made an appearance. Uh, she's still looks, she looks, still looks in great form. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. She's office now, though. She's not a wrestler, yeah. which we, we get told repeatedly by scott domore when he's having a go at, so tess is having a go at scott domore and then gail kim comes in and she's like this is on you you know and gail's like you're out of line and, and scott's like no gail you're out of line you're suspended and it was uh it actually felt pretty organic it, like i'm doing it really hammy and yeah it, no, it, stupid it, it makes I sense like as much as we like it sounds weird when we we're explaining it but no it did make sense when we saw it 
Yeah, Scott D'Amore actually sold this really, really well. And uh, I believed it. I believed he was a guy that was just like, uh, at wit's end, just like everyone is fucked and fucking stop it. This needs to stop. <laughs> I it's loved just, it. So he's just, I was going to say, it's just the good, good thing to have like a managerial figure actually tell someone off. It's good to actually have someone in that position instead of like, who is it? The Impact Owl, who is maybe the head of creative for all we know. Yeah, it's it's just funny to me though that he suspended her for a mm-hmm. week. You only run one show a week. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, yes. Well, I mean, within within the kayfabe of the TV show, it's like so she's suspended until the next TV show. Mm-hmm. Whoop de doo, Basil. <laughs> uh, with w- within the kayfabe of the live event company, mm-hmm. they do four weeks of tapings at a time. Yeah. So suspending her for one week does less than nothing. <laughs> <laughs> like less than nothing i thought that was really funny but yeah ten impact logic yeah <laughs> so we're getting gail kim coming out of retirement obviously we're gonna because you can't you can't have all this happen and then not have gail versus tessa yeah. like it has to happen absolutely and it yeah. gives her something to do while jordan is going off to face Taya. yeah whether it's an actual return or if it's just a, a one-off uh match to put put tessa over which is what i would prefer yeah, i think so would i um, she comes back, puts Tessa over, and then you can have uh, Mama Rain on the next set of tapings to put Tessa over, and then you get Tessa going after Jordan Grace, who has the title, right? Like that's that's sort of how I would run things, but yeah, I, th- I think it should be a one-off. It's all coming together. Yeah. Uh, also, more more progression, more progression. We get Rosemary backstage. She's talking to Ali mm-hmm. Dark. We don't call her Dark Ali on this no? show, just so okay. you know. No, because Dark Alley sounds like something you're afraid to walk down at night. <laughs> Alley Dark sounds like a really cool comic book character that's gone dark, you know? Yes. It's, yeah, this is basic stuff. I thought it was. Like, her name's Alley. You can't call it Dark Alley. That doesn't make sense. It, on it sounds on their YouTube channel, they just say Broken Alley. So I, I was like thinking it was, it was more like a Matt Hardy situation. <laughs> broken broken alley bunny no uh, so yeah rosemary's grilling her about uh you know after all the times we've tried to save you rara all this sort of stuff and uh she wants to save bunny but alley dark says bunny is gone and uh you know it gets a bit, gets a bit tense mm-hmm. yeah but it's it's it, this is new this is new we have alley in the possession of rosemary which i mean should anyone really be in the possession of anyone probably not but you know, I mean, when we're dealing with demons and and things, uh, the supernatural realm, it's it's a little different. They don't ha- share our rules and logic. <laughs> no, no, uh, which I I enjoy. I like the supernatural stuff when they're not jogging in place, when they're not doing the same thing over and over. I I like this stuff, mm-hmm. so I'm curious to see where it goes from here. Do they have to go back into the underworld again? Because those sequences, for me at least, are always super fun, especially when they have lightning fights out of their hands. I think it's going to be great. You're in for a treat. I can't wait. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, then we get uh, an OVE Handycam promo. It's been a while since we've had one of these as well. And uh, saying they gave Rich Swan the opportunity and he threw it away. So now they're going to take everything, everything. <laughs> and uh, I, so every time they, they they start yelling everything, I just think of Strong Mad. Do you remember, do you remember Homestar Runner? I can't say that I do. Okay, I'm showing my age here. Homestar Runner was like a web-based cartoon Mm -hmm. and there was a character called Strong Mad and he was like really dumb and really strong and he was always angry and he was and he would talk like that everything like that's just how he would talk and so when they do the everything I just think of Strong Mad anyway uh that's that's my story and I'm sticking Mm -hmm. to it uh yeah they're gonna take everything he loves starting with the X Division title cannot wait I reckon Sam Callahan would do really well with the exhibition championship, especially going up into not, I'm not after United We Stand. I've forgotten the name of the next pay per view, but yeah, Rebellion. Rebellion. Thank you. Yeah, how how good is it that uh, that people on Impact can just make whatever matches they want? Yeah, I <laughs> I've, I've been saying like like again I said before like I do like the idea of a managerial figure, but at the same time, it's good that. It's, it's overplayed. Yeah, some some characters it, it works well that there is no figure and that they can just kind of make their own stories going forward. And yeah, I, it just feels so chaotic. Yes, though. it does. It's, it's it's odd. It's very very odd because like there is an impact management, but they just they just like yeah, we'll allow it. 
Like they're very, very loosey goosey. Yeah, I, yeah. I got that early on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's it's not a very tight <laughs> ship organizationally. Eli Drake, Eddie Edwards, Desi Hit Squad. Uh, I'm fairly certain that not too long ago, Eli Drake was beating the Desi Hit Squad on his own. Yes. Um, <laughs> so you know, this match was a foregone conclusion. <laughs> but it was just they needed to pay for time before the main event, I suppose, and. Yeah, they did their job, I guess. But uh, this had progression too. This had progression. This, like I said, this was a good episode of Impact. This had progression because now uh, Eli Drake, in his attempts to get Eddie Edwards to team with him, he's like, all right, look, we'll do things your way sometimes, yeah. right? He tossed him Kenny. And and so it's like, I'm. I, it f- felt like Eli Drake saying, look, I'm serious about this team thing. I'm not fucking with you because that was always a possibility mm-hmm. that this was some sort of ploy by Eli Drake. But he's like, I'm, I'm taking this seriously. I'll meet you halfway. Yeah. You know, it, it's real progression. I like the story that I, I've said for a few weeks now. I like the story they're telling with Eli Drake and Eddie Edwards, and they haven't they haven't done the jog in place with these guys. They've actually, since they started this story, every week has had some kind of new element, some kind of change in what's happening. Uh, you know, but therefore, but therefore, mm-hmm. uh, so it's it's really good. It's really good. I'm enjoying this story a lot. And then we get the main event. Well, before we get the main event, we get really awkward commentary. Yeah. Did you notice that? Like during the Desi match, or you mean after that? Yeah, after the Desi match. So the shift, there's a commentary shift where, um, so the Desi match finishes and Eddie and Nat are going to the back and they're pumping up the main event. Like, coming up next, we've got this, rah, rah, rah. And then they cut to the desk. Yeah. And then the audio shifts, so you can clearly tell the previous commentary was piped in yeah. after the fact. And now we're back to the live commentary track and, and it's a really clear audio shift and it, it sounds awful. Yeah, I, I was trying to place what was a bit off about it, but I, at the same time, they only had about, like, what, five, six minutes towards the end. I was thinking that, oh, maybe they got, they went over their time limit and they had to, like, get cut for time. I, I was I was really trying to put my finger on exactly what happened there. Yeah, no, I, I don't know from a technical standpoint why it occurred, but it was just a little jarring to me. It, it was really obvious, and it's such a minor nitpick, mm. I know, but... It's it's the kind of thing that uh, if it's noticeable, that's not mm-hmm. good because um, it makes the show like it, it ruins the illusion. Which I mean, Impact don't really care because they do Twitch streams where you know, uh, uh, old mate Josh Matthews is in his house patting his cat yeah. when he's supposed to be commentating a show, but it's an ad break. He he drove home to pat his cat during the ad break, guys. That's that's what's happening here. <laughs> so we get the main event. And it's Impact vs. Cage for the World Championship. Impact's music hits, but uh, no Impact. No, not yet anyway. Killer Cross comes out, carrying yes. Impact. He still has the neck brace on. He's carrying a cinder block and a chair. It takes way too long for security guards to come running out. <laughs> I did note. Did you notice that one of the security guards was the same person that Tessa beat the, the bell announcer that she beat up before? So he did double duty that night. <laughs> continuity <laughs> that's awesome i didn't notice that uh but yeah th- so the security guards all get beaten up by killer cross and then he's about to line up you know a chair shot with the mm-hmm. cinder block and uh out comes tyre mm-hmm. tyre's dragon cage with her and he's like uh, really reluctant yep. to help uh so tyre just goes in instead mm-hmm. i wasn't too sure like how she would like because i haven't seen her wrestle in impact before like whether she would actually put up a fight against cross or would she would be that the damsel like wife and just which is what what she did of course yeah which is kind of out of yeah. character for la vera la vera loca la, la vera loca i can never say yeah. it man <laughs> it's kind of out of character for her uh to try to play a damsel but we're getting a character change so it's okay um it lures brian cage in obviously you know killer cross advancing on her lures brian cage in he saves her takes down Cross, and then Tyre hits him with the low blow. Johnny Impact kips up, and they're heels! Finally. <laughs> they are heels! We've been worked. I've said it, finally, or I've said it for months that they're heels, and it looks as though one of two things has happened. That was always the plan, and I was just picking up on the mm-hmm. foreshadowing, uh, and it took too long, and so it frustrated me, or I got worked like fucking crazy. You know, I, I don't know. It's... I'm glad that they finally pulled the trigger and made him an actual mm-hmm. heel. 
because it looks like I guess Killer Cross made an offer to him once before, like if you ever need me, I'm yeah. there. So it looks like he's taken up that offer, and uh, this is exciting. Absolutely, and I think we all kind of shared how Killer Cross reacted to this whole shift because he was just laughing his ass off while yeah Brian Cage yes. is getting attacked here. Yeah. Yeah, and it's 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 one of those things too where I guess them taking so long to pull the trigger mm. on this, if they'd done it quickly, uh, it would have been like, oh yeah, I expected that. That makes sense because he looked l- like he was acting like a heel, and now mm. he's a heel. But because they kept putting him over as a babyface on commentary, they kept uh, having him act like he was a babyface, even though he wasn't acting like a babyface. Like he he kept yeah. saying things made him sound like a baby face even though he was acting like he wasn't and i was like you're a hypocrite that makes you a heel you're a heel what are you doing uh i was worked i really was because they took long enough to pull mm-hmm. the trigger to the point where i believed that they were doing a roman reign situation where they were just like no he's a mm-hmm. face and and then when he turned i was shocked i didn't expect no, it. i didn't expect it so soon and like i i was the, throughout the night, they kept repeating it over and over, saying that Brian Cage will get his shot. Brian Cage will get his shot. They did the big, uh, the hype package leading up to it as well, like kind of ominous. Yeah. And as much as like, like I said, we only had about five minutes left, and just like, okay, what are they going to do here? Finally, it happened. <laughs> yeah, it was great, masterful storytelling. I clap, I bow, I take my hat off to Don Callis and Scott Diamore. I was wrong. I was worked. The story is compelling again. Keep, Please don't hit keep the it brakes. up, guys. Keep it, up. keep it going. Keep it going. Keep it going. Keep it going. Because uh, it was this time last year where I got back into Impact with the uh, United We Stand. Well, it wasn't called United We Stand last year. It was just you know Lucha Underground Cross yeah. Impact. That was what got me back into Impact. And uh, so we're heading into what I would consider the hot season because it's what made me fall back in love with Impact. So. Hopefully they keep this momentum rolling and we get another another hot season. Can't wait. It really it feels like I've come into this at the right time. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but that does it for Impact this week. Uh, where can people find you if they want to shoot you a message, man? Uh, they can find me at Miss Mysterious with a 107i on all the socials, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Twitter, YouTube. Hit me up, guys. We'll have a chat. I am at Greg Unchained on Twitter, at the Greg Unchained on Instagram. We collectively are the B Plus Wrestle on Twitter because wrestling wouldn't fit. The B Plus Wrestling everywhere else. Like, share, subscribe, five star review if you like what we do. And thank you so much for listening. See you guys. Hold one. Arm drag. You're not doing this. Get out. Let me tell you a personal story about Vince McMahon. You just made the list. Oh my God. So, no speak English. Dummy. It's still real to me, damn it! <laughs> Coming down. Hold three. The moss covered. Three handles.